They just don't make character actors like that anymore. I'm talking about Lee Marvin. Despite his rough and tough persona, the actor was way more than a character actor. Lee Marvin played leaders of men no one else could possibly lead. Cold-hearted villains, tortured husbands. He could actually beat John Wayne in a fist fight, and he could rival Marlon Brando in a motorcycle gang. He was definitely a man whose bark was bad, but whose bite was a lot worse. Despite his rough and tough persona, Lee Marvin wasn't born in a boxcar as wolves howled at night, but came into life the child of a comfortable middle-class couple. He was born Lamont Waltman Marvin Jr. on February 19, 1924 in New York City. As was the case with his elder brother Robert, he was named in honor of Confederate General Robert E. Lee, who was his first cousin four times removed. His father was a direct descendant of Matthew Marvin Sr., who basically founded the town of Hartford, Connecticut. He studied violin when he was young, and as a teenager, he spent weekends and a lot of his spare time hunting deer, wild turkey, quail, in the wilds of the uncharted Everglades. As a kid, he was expelled from every school that his parents put him into. It was all for bad behavior. He had a rebellious nature that just could not be tamed. He definitely had prison written all over his name tag as a youth. When he was 18, he left school and enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in 1942. While serving, he was wounded in action June 18, 1944, during an assault in the Battle of Saipan. This was a time when almost his entire company was lost, except for three people he being one of them. He was hit by machine gun fire, and it severed his sciatic nerve. Then he was hit again in the foot by a sniper. He spent an entire year in naval hospitals, and he finally was given a medical discharge with the rank of private first class. He had previously held the rank of corporal, but he had been demoted for troublemaking. You see, his troubled youth had come back to again haunt him. He's often stated that the service taught him how to act. He had to change his behavior and modify it. Following the war, he fell into acting quite by accident, and I mean really by accident. While he was working, fixing pipes in a theater for a company, at a local community theater in upstate New York, he was asked to replace an actor who had fallen ill during rehearsals. He basically caught the acting bug after that, and he got a job with a company paying $7 a week. He moved to Greenwich Village and used the GI Bill to study at the American Theater Wing. See, Lee Marvin never really cured his demons. He just created a place where he could act out his misbehaving in a normal fashion. And that was in the career of acting. He appeared in stage productions of Uniform of Flesh. That was an adaption of Billy Budd from 1949. It was done at the Experimental Theater, where a few months later he appeared in the 19th Hole of Europe from 1949. He began appearing in television shows like Escape, The Big Story, Treasury Men in Action. He was just as no-nonsense in the real world. He was a guy who tossed a prankster roommate out of a second-story window with the same nonchalance as he did the initial script of Point Blank. No, Hollywood didn't change Lee Marvin much. It just gave him a playground within which he could wage internal battles with himself over his cowardice, his failure, his masculinity, and his violent inclinations. He needed a reason to crawl out of bed every morning, and that was it. Hollywood was the answer. His Hollywood film debut was in You're in the Navy Now in 1951. That was directed by Henry Hathaway. 
That film also marked the debut of Charles Bronson into the magic world of cinema. This show required some filming to be done in Hollywood, so Marvin decided to just stay there. As a decorated combat veteran, he was a natural in war dramas, where he frequently assisted the director and other actors in the realism of portraying infantry movement, arranging costumes, and use of firearms. He finally got to be a leading man in a hundred episodes of the Chicago Cop, Frank Ballinger, in the successful 1957 to 1960 television series M Squad. The show is often described as a hyped up violent dragnet with a hard as nails Marvin playing the tough police lieutenant. He actually got that role after guest starring in a memorable dragnet episode where he played a serial killer. In 1962, Hollywood inducted a new member into the John Ford's ongoing exploration of Western mythologies in The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. With his whip held ready, Marvin loomed over Jimmy Stewart with no good intentions. Barking at him, he was the embodiment of evil. Lee Marvin finally became a star for his comedic role in the offbeat western Cat Baloo, starring Jane Fonda. This was a surprise hit, and Marvin won a 1965 Academy Award for Best Actor. Playing alongside Vivian Lee, Marvin won the 1966 National Board of Review Award for Male Actors for his role in Ship of Fools. In 1966, he was in a western called The Professionals, where he played the leader of a small band of skilled mercenaries rescuing a kidnapped victim shortly after the Mexican Revolution. He followed that film with a hugely successful World War II epic, The Dirty Dozen, done in 1969, in which he was top-billed playing an intrepid commander of a colorful group performing an almost impossible mission. This group included Charles Bronson, Telly Savalas, Donald Sutherland, and others. In the wake of so many of his films being received as Oscar potential, he was given enormous control over his next film, which is Point Blank. This was an influential film for director John Borman. He portrayed a hard-nosed criminal bent on revenge. Lee Marvin actually selected Borman himself for the director's slot. He also had a central role in the film's development, plotline, and staging. Lee Marvin's style of acting was based on the premise that he wanted the audience to grimace and stiffen, but he always wanted them to look back, captivated by what they had seen. Gradually finding that it's natural for human nature to want to see repelling things and then look back on them. Hollywood was founded on making the facts of life palatable. And then along came Lee Marvin to help us swallow human cruelty a little more easily. Someone once noted that his eyes were bloodshot at the end of Cat Baloo, and he responded, you ought to see him from my side. Lee's final appearance was in The Delta Force from 1986 with Chuck Norris, playing a role that was turned down by Charles Bronson. In 1971, he was sued by his live-in girlfriend from 1965 to 1970, who legally changed her surname to Marvin. Although the couple was never married, she sought financial compensation, similar to those available to spouses under California's alimony and community property laws. She claimed that Lee Marvin made her pregnant three times and paid for two abortions, while one pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. She claimed that the second abortion left her unable to bear children anymore. The result was a landmark palimony case called Marvin v. Marvin. The case was often parodied on Saturday Night Live and on The Johnny Carson Show. In December of 1986, he was hospitalized for more than two weeks because of a fungal infection 
in his lungs. His health continued to worsen as time went on. He finally died of a heart attack August 29, 1987, at the age of 63. He was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery. Rest in peace. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.